Welcome to the daily word for the season of Pentecost. Today's reading is taken from the book of Ezekiel, chapter eighteen, verses one to eleven a, thirteen b, thirty and thirty two. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent, as well as the life of the child, is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. If a man is righteous and does what is lawful and right, if he does not eat upon the mountains or lift up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. Does not defile his neighbor's wife, or approach a woman during her menstrual period. Does not oppress any one, but restores to the debtor his pledge. Commits no robbery. Gives his bread to the hungry and covers the naked with a garment. Does not take advance or accrued interest. Withholds his hand from iniquity, executes true justice between contending party, follows my statutes, and is careful to observe my ordinances, acting faithfully. Such a one is righteous; he shall surely live, says the Lord God. If he has a son who is violent, a shedder of blood, who does any of these things, though his father does none of them, he shall surely die. His blood shall be upon himself. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you. According to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions; otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. For I have no pleasure in the death of any one, says the Lord God. Turn, then, and live. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the warning. It's uncomfortable being told that we have flaws and defects, or that we've made mistakes and we're at fault. This is the situation that the Israelites are faced with. They're in exile, and the prophet Ezekiel has been confronting them about the reason for their situation, namely, their sin and rebellion against God. Ezekiel reminds them in verses two to three that their guilt has been a burden to them, passing from parent to child, from generation to generation, as all have turned away from the Lord. However, Ezekiel reminds the Israelites of God's character. He is just, treating his people as their sins deserve. Just as God punishes the guilty, hence the exile, so God also recognizes and rewards the righteous. In verses five to nine, Ezekiel gives a beautiful picture of the righteous life: a person who does not succumb to idolatry, nor pursues immorality, nor oppresses the weak; a person who is generous to the poor, is marked by integrity and faithfulness to God's laws. Hence, the verdict in verse nine: that man is righteous; he will surely live, declares the Lord. Perhaps, as you reflect on this picture of the righteous life, you've realised that you're nowhere near to emulating it. Your life 
whilst beautiful and attractive in many ways, does not match the perfectly righteous life described by Ezekiel. Indeed, none of us live this righteous life. The Apostle Paul says, There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. Romans 3. God knows our heart condition. Twice in verses 30 and 32, he warned the Israelites to repent. His warning to the Israelites is also a warning to us. So let me ask you a question. What do you do when you've done something wrong? There are lots of options. Firstly, you can shift blame. It's not my fault. My mother made me do it. My boss made me do it. It was the circumstances. We blame something or someone else. Second, you can define it away. You can say to people, well, what I did is not really wrong. That's just your opinion. Third, you can numb yourself to forget the pain. So we medicate ourselves or get drunk or go shopping. In other words, you do things to take away the pain. Fourth, you can bring other people down. You feel bad about something that you've done, so you gossip or criticize other people so that you don't look so bad. You think what I've done is bad? That person's done it far more than me. That guy's far worse. Lastly, you could compensate. You try to do good things, achieve great things in order to compensate for whatever it is that you feel guilty about. So you go on the path of self-improvement. You work extraordinarily hard to make up for it. You give a great amount of money to some cause and behave really generously. You sign big checks. What do you do with your guilt? Ezekiel encourages us to make our first step repentance. God's character is to show mercy to those who come to him. Psalm 103 reminds us he will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. Many years after Ezekiel, the only perfectly righteous person who ever lived stepped into history. Jesus lived the perfect life that we were supposed to live, but died the death that we should have died, taking our sins upon himself. In him we find forgiveness and grace, the resources to come to God with our sins. Indeed, this is the constant encouragement in the Christian life. Martin Luther began the Protestant Reformation by nailing his 95 theses to the door of the Wittenberg Cathedral, the first of which which read, When our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said, Repent, he willed the entire life of believers to be one of repentance. In Christ is our righteousness. So when you sin and fail, return quickly to him. See his righteousness and delight in it and resolve to pursue holiness, living your life for the one who has given everything to you. Let's have a time of reflection. How do you deal with your guilt? What ways do you avoid coming to God with your sins? What sin or failure have you done recently that you have not confessed to the Lord? Bring it to God. Ask for his forgiveness. Give thanks that Jesus has taken away your sins. Ask for the Spirit's help so that you don't return to that sin. Let us pray. Loving God and Heavenly Father, thank you that in Jesus you offer forgiveness and grace. Help me to see my sin for what it is, rebelling against you. Teach me to loathe my sin and turn away from it. Give me a joyful repentance, knowing that my sins have been completely paid for. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.